Uh, my name is Dr. Troy Slintz. Um, I'm the principal doctor here at the hospital, and I have been with Wellhaven approximately two years. I grew up on an acreage in Iowa, and I was like Dr. Doolittle. I had uh, ducks and chickens and geese and goats and horses, and I was always the one who was trying to find the injured robin and bring it into the house to be able to nurse it back to health. Uh, being on an acreage provided me a lot of opportunities to do things I never would have had you know, growing up in the city. Um, I also volunteered at veterinary hospitals, which I think was very helpful for me to figure out, do I really want to do this or not? My name is Kristen Arestegui Skalbeck, and I'm a veterinarian assistant at Wellhaven. I'm proud of where I am today. I am married, mom of two, didn't worry about my age so much. At 49 years old, I went back to school. I just graduated actually from Charter College in July, and luckily I was able to get a job here at Wellhaven. My name is Dr. Sharon Graham. I am a doctor of veterinary medicine and have been now for going on 30 years. I have one particular patient that I remember. It's a little black Labrador. And the um, first time I saw him, he was about a handful. Now he's almost a year. And whenever um, his owner brings him in in the car and he sees the front of the office, he starts going kind of ballistic because he wants to get in and see us. That to me means that I'm making a difference and it makes me very happy. I think that interacting with the animals I think is probably the number one thing that I enjoy the most. Um, it's really nice to see people, you know, enjoying their, their new pets and their puppies and how excited they are to have a new animal in the house and adding to their family. So those are probably some of the biggest things that, you know, for me as a veterinarian. To me, I think the biggest thing is um, when you have a pet that comes in that's sick and then he goes home and he's in a much better place. Helping them, helping the animals and educating the pet parents on how to take care of them and how to help them live longer and happier lives. Uh, I think one of the major skills uh, for a veterinarian is really around communication and really being able to engage with the clients and with their team. People come in, they're worried, they're scared, their pet is sick, they don't know what's going on and to be able to help them walk down that path and to be able to actually, you know, oftentimes give them a good outcome where they're going home with a ha happy, healthy pet uh, gives me nothing but satisfaction and joy. Communicating with my staff members, the doctors, communicating with the pet parents, um, and attempting to remain as calm as possible. The animals feed off of our, our feelings. So if I'm nervous, they're gonna be nervous. Math actually is a big one. Uh, we have to calculate dosages for medications. Um, we have to add up our cash box. I mean, just some basic math, but then also multiplication, you know, other things like that. Um, the science part of it, knowing what the diseases are, what the immune system, how the immune system works, what the healing process is like. I think one of the best things that I would say to anyone thinking about entering this is recognizing that you have to have a sense of empathy. You have to know that you're going to be working in a situation where it's not always going to be a happy situation and that you need to be able to feel the needs of the people with you as well. Being a science major, I majored in biology with a minor in chemistry. There wasn't a ton of focus around that communication piece, to be honest. Um, it was very heavenly driven by the sciences. Having more of an experience in trying to interact with people and what that looks like would have been very, very helpful. Going from high school to college, um, I really struggled in chemistry and it was a requirement as a prerequisite to get into veterinary school. Um, the first year I took it, I got a C, uh, which was not going to get me into veterinary school. And so I took it for a second year. Um, I also got a C <laughs> the second year around. And the professor literally sat me down and said, Troy, you're never going to be a veterinarian. And I looked at him and said, yes, I am. And so I would just encourage students that have these experiences just to never give up, to get up and just go after their dreams. Um, going through veterinary medical school is not easy. Um, you've got four years of undergrad that you have to do and that has all kinds of things like biochemistry and calculus and all that sort of stuff. You have to have the ability to recognize that this too shall pass, you will get through it and you will get forward. Uh, when I was younger, 
It was uh, definitely a man's field. You very rarely saw women in the field. And, you know, some of that had to do with the, the glass ceiling that women weren't necessarily capable of doing certain things. I was actually told in undergrad by one of the professors that I really did not need to go into veterinary medicine, nor should I try, because I was married. He said I'd do better as an archivist in the library. <laughs> well, you know, after I got over that initially, I just, it made me laugh. Um, the fact that we have broken that glass ceiling now is immensely exciting to me. And as you can tell in the industry now, there are more women than there are men. When I first went back to school, um, when I had my interview, and I was older, so they were kind of hounding me about certain things there. So being older, having children, um, you know, having it be a second career, I think it was a little challenging for them at school. I didn't get in the first year I applied, I had, but the second year I did. So, um, and then I came out top of my class, so I just wanted to laugh at them. <laughs> but, um, just don't listen to people. If, if it's something that's in your heart and it's what you want to do, then you'll find a way to do it. For 13 years before this, I was a CNA, taking care of seniors. And that was hard. That tugged on my heart a lot. And dealing with an older generation, I'm of Mexican-American and Native American ancestry, so they look at me like the little brown girl. I have been accused of stealing. I have been accused of uh, down talking, things that obviously had not come true. But I have a license with the state for caregiving. Um, it's a bias and I have not received any in this industry. Um, in caregiving, I have. It's hard at times, but I know I'm doing a good job to the best of my ability. I can't let it affect me. I'm a caregiver at heart, whether it be for people or for animals. That's just what I do. Because I have that passion in me, it's helped me to achieve and get to the point that I am today. One of my teachers in high school happened to be a geometry teacher, and he was one that told each student that, you know, we had the respect of an individual. He'd help us, um, you know, geometry wasn't the big thing for everybody, and when we had a chance, he would hold classes for us after school, you know, and it became study groups. So yes, there were people along the way that helped me and made me understand that even though it looked like um, there were some obstacles that could potentially prevent me from achieving what I wanted, we had the ability to overcome that and that we had the right to have the respect that we deserve. My favorite teacher, my kindergarten teacher, Miss Melzian. I, that woman was just amazing. She opened the opportunities and the ability to ask questions. No question was dumb, no question was wrong. And we would take it further and further until that curiosity was satisfied. My science teacher in high school was very much a mentor for me and really fostered my passion around looking at um, the sciences a little bit differently. He really tried to engage the students. It wasn't just a lecture and, you know, just a project. I mean, he really got involved and helped the students understand what they're trying to learn. And I was always the one trying to do maybe something a little bit different than the norm, and he very much supported that. If you can find one thing that the child is great in, support them in that. Bring it to everyone's attention. Tommy did great in this, look at this, his, his scores are coming up so high, or Jill did great, she's having a good time doing this. If you guys have any questions, maybe ask Jill, she could probably help you. I think bringing out the little spark in them, help that grow, help that grow. I think really encouraging them to understand what their strengths are. Um, you know, looking at the science, the technologies, and things that are out there, um, each generation, I think each person has a different strength and a different focus, and being able to recognize that in that student and to help them really develop it and to really blossom into that field is the best thing that they possibly could do is to support those endeavors.